Hey guys, uh, what you're looking at here is that Bark River Knife and Tool Canadian Special. Um, I'm actually, uh, I did not do a review on this knife yet, um, but I wanted to make this video first. This, uh, as you can see as the title, is going to be about doing a forced patina on carbon steel blades. Now, I know a lot of you uh, who are just getting to knives, you have no idea what I'm talking about, what a patina is or anything. Um, carbon steel blades, like this, this is an A2 uh, steel. It's a tool steel, but it's also a carbon steel. It's not a stainless steel. Um, other carbon steels will be 1095. I know you guys are familiar with that. Um, D2, when you hear about that, that's also a carbon steel. It's a tool steel. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of others. Uh, but basically, uh, they're more susceptible to rust. Now, over time, as you use these blades, they're going to stain and they're going to form a natural patina. What a patina is, is it's a form of rusting. Uh, it's, what it actually does though, is it really protects your blade. Now you can see on this one, this, this knife did come to me slightly used. Um, you know what, let me grab my jewels real quick. To better show you this. Uh, give me just a moment here. Because it's going to be kind of hard to see, they're small right now. But let me get you in here close. Now you see like that spot there, you know that spot right there, Oop, let me get you, got to get good lighting and there we go. You can see these spots and it looks just kind of dirty, let me find another one on here towards the base, a little bit, that one right there, very minor, but that's actually a patina starting to form. It's not dirt, it will not wipe away, it's actually a form of surface rust. Uh, however, it's not red rust. Red rust will actually start pitting your blade and putting holes in your blade and eventually deteriorate the metal itself. Um, this is a form of rust that's more of a surface rust. However, with carbon steel blades, over time, and especially when you start, uh, you know, doing food prep and cutting, uh, you know, acidic foods, it's going to be more prevalent. It's going to show more. Um, people, some people love the way a patina looks. Uh, this is going to be a forced patina. In other words, what I'm doing is instead of waiting you know, months and years of use for this to naturally form across the entire blade, I'm going to force it. I'm going to, uh, you know, make it happen in an hour. And uh, by doing that, uh, or how to do that, is to use uh, some sort of uh, natural acids. Now, my preferred method for doing this, and I've only done this twice in the past, uh, but both with good results, is using vinegar. Regular, this is just white wine, or not white wine, this is just regular white uh, vinegar. You know, very simple, everyone has this in their household. And by basically um, soaking a rag in this vinegar and wrapping the, um, you know, the blade on here, letting it sit for about an hour, it's actually going to form that patina. Uh, there's a lot of other ways you can do this besides vinegar. Uh, you can use potatoes, which I might experiment with this knife. Um, you know, onions, uh, apples, any kind of citrus, you know, lemons, uh, limes, oranges. Uh, you can use uh, what's also popular is mustard paste. You know, there's a lot of uh, acidity in mustard. Uh, some people even use ketchup, ketchup and mustard together. So uh, in this video, I'm actually going to experiment a little bit. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to, or this portion of the video, I'm just going to cut film, and then I'll cut back and show you what it looks like, and then I'll explain exactly how I did it. But it's just, uh, it, for me, because I'm going to use this knife, it's not just a collector's piece, it's not going to stay polished like this forever. It would take a really a lot of effort and a lot of work to keep it looking like this if I'm going to use it. So I decided to do a forced patina on it, okay, and get that desired look how I want it to look instead of letting it happen naturally. Now, of course, this is a debate among the knife community. Some guys think it's better to let it happen naturally, um, and some guys prefer to make their own design. Uh, I'm going to do my own design. Uh, there are occasions where in the past I've ha I had uh, let this happen naturally, and it is a beautiful thing, and it's, it's cool to like I said, with use over time to see it start forming. But uh, again, this is just a different option you can do with your carbon steel blades. So I thought it would be interesting. There's already a couple of videos here on YouTube on this, um, which are actually very good. Um, but, uh, you know, I just want to make my own version of it. So here's what, notice what the knife looks like right now. Okay, just a regular polished stainless, or not stainless steel, but just a regular bare steel. And now I'm going to cut film, and I'm going to show you what it looks like with that forced patina. Okay, well, an hour has elapsed, and uh, this is what we have. This is the end result for my uh, quick force patina. 
as you see here, you have uh, lots of grays uh, in coloration, uh, both sides, kind of a random pattern. Uh, some of the darker spots are where the vinegar was more prevalent or thicker on the blade. Uh, again, all I did was uh, I just soaked the rag in it, in the uh, white vinegar, and uh, just wrapped it and let it sit for an hour. Then I unwrapped it, and I wanna, you want to uh, uh, wash it thoroughly with uh, soap and water, and then dry it really well. And basically what I did was I just pretty much aged the knife about 20 years. Um, now this is a very, uh, I would say, design specific. Um, some people will absolutely love this. Some people will hate this. Some of you guys are going, you know what, that's pretty cool. I like that. And some of you guys are going, dude, you just ruined that knife, didn't you? Well, you know, it's, it's definitely a matter of personal taste. Um, you know what, with these... Uh, these carbon steels, there's no way around it. If you're going to use this knife and you're going to have this knife for a long time, which I actually plan to do, I don't plan on trading this. Uh, I already traded a Bark River knife and I totally regret it. I will have this for years and years. And uh, I've just committed to that by doing this. <laughs> but you know what, this is going to happen eventually anyway. I might as well do it right off the bat and I don't have to worry about what I cut. I don't have to really worry about it. I mean, it's already, I already have that form patina. Um, a lot of you guys will recognize the way this looks. I mean, if you have a handed down knife, maybe from a grandfather, uh, you know, a father, something like that, you may have a pocket knife, you know, a slip joint where you take the blades out and, you know what, they look exactly the same. They look very old, um, you know, beat up. That's kind of like what it is. And that, it's just it's what happens with age. There's no way around it. Um, this is what the knife is going to look like, like I said, in a couple years anyway, or way down the line. So why not just force it right away and now I don't, I don't have to worry about maintaining the blade. I don't have to worry about uh, rust anymore. It's just not going to happen now. It's already taken care of. I can use this for food prep if I want now. And you know what? Maybe I'll make a video on that. I'll show me uh, cutting up some citrus and stuff. That should be interesting. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I, I happen to like it. Like I said, sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. Uh, and this one I'm just going to have for a long time. I've already decided on that, so I decided to just go ahead and do it. Uh, I happen to like it. Now you can do different patterns if you want. I just did. I simply just wrap this in the the rag. Uh, what I see a lot of guys do too is uh, they like the Strider uh, Tiger striping. You could do that if you want to get you know a, maybe paper towels or something and and fold them so you have like a thin strip and then put across strips. That would work fine too. You'd have a tiger striping pattern. The longer you keep your um, you know your uh, acids on here, the deeper the color will be. Okay, I did a full hour and I got this you know medium gray. If you kept it on there for two hours or three hours, it would be a very deep gray, almost like a black. Um, you may prefer that. Maybe you want it a lot darker. Uh, maybe you want it a lot lighter. It really just depends on how long you keep it on there. Now, another tip, too, is that certain things will give it a certain color characteristic. For example, I found that if you use potatoes, uh, not, you know, from the, from the start, when you have the bare blade, if you just use potatoes, like you cut a bunch of potatoes and kind of leave the... Um, the potato uh, on here or rub the juice on there you'll get kind of a blue color um, which is very very different from a lot of different things um, which is kinda cool you may you may like that um, you know if you have a really nice knife you don't want to just break it out and just do this and because you might you might not like the results and there's no real way of going back unless you polish this up uh, which would take quite a bit of effort, uh, effort. Um, but I did want to show you this it is interesting to me uh, anyway I know some people might hear that term being thrown around patina and uh, kind of wonder what it is, and that's what it is. Uh, basically, you're pre-aging your knife, so you don't really have to worry about taking uh, care of it as much. The maintenance is not really, it's not as high anymore on this blade. I don't have to worry about it, which I think is awesome, because I do plan on using this one. Um, I have to say, though, uh, by doing this, you are decreasing the value of the knife if you do plan on selling it in the future or something like that. Um, for me, again, not an issue. This one's staying with me probably... Probably forever, to be honest. I'd like to keep this forever. But um, anyway, I want to show you that. That is a forced patina on a, uh, a knife blade. Now, the, the first portion of this video, um, I did mention that this is more prevalent or will happen more often with uh, carbon steel blades. It doesn't mean stainless steel blades won't do that. In fact, stainless steel blades will form a patina just like this uh, with age. It's just going to take a lot longer for stainless steel to turn. Um, that's the only real difference. Carbon steel will happen naturally a lot faster. Um, you know, again, going back to the example of hand-me-down knives. If you have your father's knife or grandfather's knife or maybe someone in the family passed down an old knife to you, even if the blade's stainless steel, you, you're probably going to see something similar to this. It's going to look very, very similar. 
And by the way, I only did the, you can see I only did the blade portion here. You can see the contrast between the uh, full tang, the bottom portion, uh, and there. I will probably go back and just wrap the handles just to even that out a little bit. Um, but I happen to like it. Like I said, it's definitely a taste issue. You may not like this at all. You may think it's dirty looking, old, and that's really what it is. It looks old. But uh, you know what? I have kind of strange preference, and some knife buffs actually prefer this. They like this, and I'm one of those guys. Uh, not on all my blades, you know, but I wanted to do it to this one. So, anyway, wanted to show you that. Like I said, a little something a little different. You don't see too many videos on here. If you actually search Patina, P-A-T-I-N-A, -A, here, you'll see uh, uh, another um, uh, guy who does videos here. He has a couple Bark River knives. Uh, he, he formed a really cool patina on uh, one of his knives. I think it was a Fox River. I could be wrong. Uh, or no, maybe it was a Bravo uh, model. But uh, his came out really nice too. You know, you can experiment with it. You can get all different, uh, you know, finished looks on it. But anyway, like I said, just wanted to show you that. Hopefully the lighting's good enough where you can pick that up. I happen to like it. I may, You may think I'm strange, but I happen to like it. And now I have no problems. I can use this knife, break it out, use it. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, but I, you know what, thinking about it, I'm actually going to, um, now that I did this, I don't have to worry about you know, cutting into you know, acidic stuff anymore. I, maybe I'll start, I'll do a little vid of uh, me cutting up some stuff, some fruit and veggies, you know, just to show how the, uh, the edge works on there. But uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. Hope you learned a little something, and uh, I'll see you in my next one. Take care.